Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain Television with Esther Galoom. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa today held his weekly majlis at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness welcomed a wide range of visitors including members of the Royal Family, senior government officials, members of the Council of Representatives and the Shura Council, members of municipal councils, prominent religious figures, academics, community leaders, journalists and diplomats accredited to the Kingdom. The audience expressed their appreciation of His Royal Highness's keen engagement with citizens by maintaining commitment to Bahrain's values, traditions and national identity. The attendees also commended His Royal Highness's efforts to reinforce the Kingdom's sustainable development under the development programme initiated by His Majesty the King, as well as the government's efforts to deliver significant improvement to public services. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports and Head of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, received today the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Hisham bin Mohammed Al Jauda, who presented to His Highness the Ministry's plan for promoting the sport of mixed martial arts in the Kingdom. His Highness affirmed that promoting MMA among the Kingdom's national clubs and youth centres comes in line with the goals of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, headed by His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, in addition to the remarkable efforts of the Ministry of Sports and Youth Affairs in attracting youth to this field of sports. His Highness Sheikh Ali expressed his appreciation for the plan presented by the Minister, which he said would greatly contribute to promote the MMA sport in future. For his part, the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs hailed the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Hamid regarding developing and promoting the MMA sports in Bahrain and expressed the Ministry's keenness to implement its plans regarding promoting the MMA sports through national clubs and youth centres. And the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports and Head of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, also met with the Higher Organising Committee of Khalid bin Hamid Youth Centre's Futsal Cup and the winner of the Championship Al Zalak Youth Centre football team in the presence of the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Dr Hisham Al Jauda. 
His Highness Sheikh Khalid commended the excellent organisation of the event by the Ministry of Sports and Youth Affairs. He congratulated Al Zalak Youth Centre football team for winning the cup, praising the players' efforts during the matches. His Highness urged all youth centres to exert more efforts to achieve the goals of the next tournament. He expressed thanks and appreciation to Bahrain National Bank for sponsoring the cup and presented its representative with a commemorative gift. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the Deputy Premier Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa this morning launched the Invest in Bahrain 2015 Forum. Over 1,000 participants are taking part in the 10th edition of the Forum, with 120 companies and institutions participating in the Forum's exhibition to showcase investment opportunities in telecoms and logistics, as well as aluminium and strategic projects. The Deputy Premier expressed thanks to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for deputising him to open the Forum, which supports the Kingdom's economic and development march. He highlighted the government's keenness to develop its legislative infrastructure, as demonstrated by the recent urgent royal decrees by law aimed at strengthening a comprehensive economic environment. Sheikh Ali bin Abdullah pointed out that the kingdom's foreign direct investment in 2014 of around 960 million US dollars testified to the kingdom's wise economic vision and has earned Bahrain the title of one of the most open and liberal economies in the world. For his part, the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Al Zayani, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his annual patronage of the forum. He said the ministry was seeking to establish successful and fruitful partnerships with all sides and to benefit from investment opportunities in all industries. On the sidelines of the forum, the Deputy Premier Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah opened the forum's exhibition, which is dedicated to national small and medium industries. And we have more in a report in a moment. Bahrain is an attractive location for investors from all around the world. According to the most recent UN World Investment Report, foreign direct investment, FDI, reached $957 million last year, with percentage of GDP at 55.4% and inward FDI stocks of $18.8 billion, the highest in the GCC and well above the global average. The Heritage Foundation's 2015 Index of Economic Freedom saw the kingdom ranked 18th in the world and first in the MENA region. And in 2013, the Fraser Institute's annual Economic Freedom of the World Index ranked Bahrain the eighth freest global economy. These accolades emphasize the effectiveness of the government's policies to work in partnership with the private sector to create the ideal environment in which to grow and diversify Bahrain's economy. The Invest in Bahrain Forum and Exhibition has continued this work across all sectors and industries. Now in its 10th year, there has been an added focus on encouraging internal expansion and developing exports. Furthermore, the event has served to inform the local and overseas markets of regulatory enhancements that have recently been made. We had three um, laws changed recently. The first had to do with industrial land, uh, and we had an update on the, on the previous law, uh, whereby we have more facilitation of land, more access to land, uh, and more, uh, a more fluid process in awarding land and also taking land away from violators, which was a main concern for the ministry because we, we were kind of stuck dealing with violators who deprived others from genuine investment opportunities. Uh, the second law was the new commercial registration law, uh, which was really a completely new law because the previous law was dated in 1961, so it was kind of out of date and needed to have a full revamp which we did uh, and the third law was the uh, company's law which we again did some changes on not contrary to the other one the the company's law was updated slightly updated last summer but we felt that there were more changes needed and th those were pushed through the whole spirit of the changes is to facilitate investment to make the process of setting up in bahrain and registering a business and starting a business a lot more transparent and easier to do and to support those who are genuinely looking for investment opportunities and also deter those who try to manipulate the system. 
Although Bahrain is already a hub of foreign direct investment, the public and private sectors are showing no signs of slowing down in their cooperation to boost and diversify trade and investment in Bahrain. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. The Kingdom of Bahrain has been unanimously elected as Vice President of the General Conference of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, known as UNESCO. The election took place during the 38th session of UNESCO's General Conference, which kicked off in the French capital Paris in the presence of heads of delegations from the organization's member states. Education Minister Dr Majid al Naimi described the achievement as a reassertion of Bahrain's international status and the global respect it enjoys after being elected unanimously to the post for the second consecutive time. He added that the accomplishment was a tribute to the Kingdom's diligent efforts and good reputation, achieved thanks to the directives of the leadership. The fourth edition of the Arab Gulf Forum for Strategic Planning opened its sessions on November the 3rd, discussing the different threats currently facing the region, be they military, economic, media-related or political. More details with Sarah Albarek in this report. The fourth Arab Gulf Forum for Strategic Planning launched its second day of sessions today on a safe platform designated to discuss threats that face the GCC region, not only military threats but also those pertaining to political issues and the ever-growing modern media arena that keeps becoming an even greater threat because of its usage by terrorist organizations such as ISIL to recruit youngsters and those disillusioned. An example are some prominent video games that use known terrorist leaders or organizations organizations as main characters in their games. I mean, the game designers thought that this is an interesting aspect to gain more uh, audience among the kids with uh, something that they can relate to, which is in the news. Instead of having the old uh, bad guy, good guys, uh, uh, cops and thieves and all that. So they have something that uh, now they have the terrorism, more interesting, more exciting, more bombing, more uh, explosions. And uh, that will, 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 uh, um, uh, will attract especially kids who see all the time in the movies and television all these violent actions happening. Now ISIS have the same. ISIS into the gaming now and using it to, uh, to uh, spread their message. Uh, this is very dangerous now, I believe. It comes pause in uh, the, what we call now the Islamophobia, uh, having that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, giving the, the audience something to fear of that those people are to be uh, afraid of, and they are, they, are, they are bad. Another topic of interest was the idea that maybe the rest of the world has underestimated the GCC's strengths, whether military or political. Why is that, and has the idea been fixed? Uh, actually, we, uh, the, the, uh, the, maybe it's, it's from our side that we didn't present ourselves very well. Uh, we do not talk much about our strength. That maybe makes or sends a message to the world that we don't, we are not strong enough to protect ourselves. So, after the the uh, what called Asif al Hazm, the world has changed his idea about the region, especially GCC countries. So now we have st strong military uh, uh, capabilities in the region. We need to have same strong. Uh, medias or media strength to explore our ideas to the world and to let them know what is our project or what our project in, in Yemen is and why we interfere at this time in, in, militarily in Yemen. In a time of unrest, media is the only source of information that the people of any country might have. And if media has not improved in this last millennium, then the social media has done so very effectively. This is Sarah Brake for Bahrain 55. And now it's time for the latest business news with Mohammed. Thank you, Esther.
A very good evening. You're watching the Business and News on Bahrain Television. The Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,251.19 points, a decrease of 8.78 points below last closing. The fall was in the commercial banks, services, and industrial sectors. Investors traded mainly in the commercial banks, with 77% of total shares traded. 43 transactions took place with a volume of 2,430,649 shares, or 374,504 Bahraini dinars.